Yes. Right. So uh, yesterday I was uh, talking about uh, the the challenge to the the standard philosophical conception of full or outright uh, belief that that comes from um, a broadly uh, Bayesian uh, perspective on which uh, credencies or subjective uh, probabilities are. The, uh, the more basic uh, thing, and uh, that, full, that what so-called full belief is just to be understood in terms of those. I'm, I'm going to uh, continue this uh, theme of the, the status of uh, this supposed uh, state of uh, full belief um, under challenge from um, various uh, Proposals to, to as in some way, deflate it by understanding it in, in terms of, or as some kind of weaker uh, type of uh, commitment. Um, but the, 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 the kind of challenge I'm going to talk about today is, uh, is one, it's one that comes uh, from um, natural language uh, semantics, and uh, it's been articulated uh, in a, a recent paper in Philosophical Studies by John Hawthorne, Daniel Rothschild, and L Levi Spector, um, where they're arguing that uh, the philosophers have misunderstood the way that the, the term uh, belief uh, is used in ordinary uh, language. And they're, they're using data not so much from Bayesian probability theory, but from natural language <coughs> Uh, semantics um, to argue that uh, the term be belief just stands for a, a much weaker kind of uh, relation than philosophers have uh, thought. And, and, and they, they're not meaning this just as a challenge to the uh, interpretation of natural language, but they're suggesting that as a result of this misunderstanding, um, philosophers uh, have, have posited a kind of state, um, a full belief, for which there isn't really any uh, good evidence. I mean, the, uh, after all, you know, our understanding of, the, of mental states is, to a large extent, mediated by the, the way in which we describe them uh, in natural language. And, and if it turns out that natural language, uh, as w w when uh, we're using the, uh, the term belief, is not talking about the kind of state that uh, we think it is, uh, w that does pre I mean, present some kind of challenge to the idea that there is such a state at all. I mean, of course, it's possible that there's such a state, but that it's not uh, expressed in any direct uh, or simple way uh, in natural language, but but our assumption that there's such a state might be uh, undermined. Um, a lot of the discussion will be um, about uh, the the term belief, but I, but I'm also going to uh, to talk uh, quite a bit as as uh, Hawthorne Rothschild and Spectre do about uh, think, which is actually the the more common verb in in English for talking about these uh, things. So that as it were, the the, the the most ordinary way of roughly speaking reporting somebody's opinions is by talking about what they think. I mean, they they think that. Um, Margaret Gilbert's lecture will be at five o'clock, rather than they believe that it will be at uh, five o'clock. And I uh, think is I think is is uh, a much more uh, uh, commonly used uh, verb than believe in uh, in English. And uh, and I mean Rothschild and uh, I mean the, and the, the others they're they're also concerned, in particular with the the contrast between, on the one hand, belief and uh, think, uh, or believe and think, and on the other, uh, terms like uh, to, be, to be sure or to be certain. Um, and uh, I mean, w w one of the starting points is just that if we say something like, um, Mary believes it's raining, but she's not sh uh, sure it's raining, 
that, that seems to be a, a very um, ordinary kind of uh, comment on, on Mary's uh, state of mind. And uh, it involves a contrast between believing and being sure, uh, where being sure seems like, as it were, so, something more than is required for belief as, um, as philosophers have traditionally understood it, because belief doesn't require something like being sure or being, uh, being certain, just, uh, but just ordinary kind of commitment. Um, and, uh, and so that suggests that there's, there's something going on here with belief that, that uh, means that it uh, stands for some lower level of uh, commitment. And as we're just just a, a sort of background comment about the the frequency of these terms. So uh, we've got um, thinking, believing, being sure, and being uh, certain. Um, and of these, th think is by far the commonest. Uh, believe is uh, the next most common, and then um, being being sure and being certain are both much, much less common than either think uh, or believe. Um, so w one shouldn't take it for granted that whenever these terms, uh, whenever believe or think uh, um, are used, that there is an implicit contrast uh, with sure or, uh, or sure, certain. Um, but it seems that uh, w when, when we do have uh, b both believe and or think and uh, being sure or being certain in the uh, in the same context then it's um, sh being sure and being certain which uh, stand for the the stronger more more as we're committing uh, relation to the the proposition at issue um, <clears throat> So what? So one um, aspect of uh, of uh, th their argument, which I'll I'll say something about, is it's by uh, appeal to uh, the the phenomenon uh, known as uh, neg raising, um, where. This, this is, we're now on about the middle of page two of the, of the handout. Um, so if you, if you say um, in English, Mary does not believe it will rain, that is normally uh, understood as um, meaning something more like Mary believes uh, it will not rain. Um, so there's something curious going on here because the it, it, it seems that as it were what syntactically looks like um, just n n denying belief uh, is interpreted as belief in the the denial with the negation going inside the the, uh, the scope of the uh, of the belief operator. Um, and I mean, this this is a, a, quite a a widespread um, phenomenon in natural um, language, and you know, it's it's something that that you know, we most of the time we don't even think about. But you know, if 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 I if I say you know I don't think it will rain, you will you typically. Um, Interpret that as saying, you know, that I'm I'm saying I think it w will not rain. So it's, I mean, it, it, this works just as much with uh, think as uh, with believe. By the way, what one just m parenthetical methodological comment that I, I might make at this point is that the uh, some of the examples that. Um, Hawthorne, Rothschild, and Spectre use are examples in the first person with I, I think, uh, and um, rather than Mary thinks or whatever. Um, in general, I think you know one has to be pretty cautious um, about 
examples with attitude ascriptions in the first person uh, present tense. Um, be because um, w what they involve are cases where you have a, a collapse of the, um, the distinction between the, the perspective of the reporter or ascriber of the attitude and the perspective of, to which the attitude is being ascribed. Um, so, I mean, normally, you know, if, if I say that um, Mary thought something or other, then the, I'm the ascriber and the, the, I'm ascribing it now and I'm talking about what attitude Mary had at some past time. But if you use first person present tense examples, the, 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 those two perspectives um, are, are collapsed and um, and, and that gives rise to a whole lot of, uh, sort of confusing pragmatic uh, phenomena um, where it's very hard to disentangle uh, the different aspects uh, of what's going on. And, and this is involved in uh, things like Moore's paradox and so on, where, um, you know, P but I don't believe uh, P it, 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 it suffer, is paradoxical, but but uh, P, but I didn't believe P yesterday, or P, but um, Mary doesn't believe P, or whatever it is, are, are fine. And so I, I just, as a, a methodological comment, I, I think it's better to keep the examples uh, in the, the third, uh, third person. Um, so, this, this, but, so back to the phenomenon of, of neg raising, which we have with, with both believe and uh, think. Um, this is a well-known phenomenon which is associated uh, with terms that have a comparatively weak meaning on whatever the relevant scale is. So uh, in the case of, um, of believe and think, uh, if we take the what seems to be the stronger term, being sure, uh, there's no neg raising with um, being sure. Uh, um, so um, if you look at 22a, Mary is not sure it will rain. That it is not at all interpreted as Mary is sure it will not rain. Um, and a, a, another, just, just to give examples of this phenomenon outside the, as well, the doxastic uh, realm, there's, uh, it, it, you have it with uh, want, which is a relatively weak, uh, as if you like, desire term. So John does not want to exercise. Um, so it is typically uh, interpreted at, in some sense as John wants to not exercise. Um, so you know, if, if if I if I you know if I said that I was just indifferent to whether I to whether I um, exercise or not, um, it would sound very odd for somebody to say, "Ah, oh, so you do, you don't want to to exercise." That would seem as if they were contradicting me, even though it's, it, if I'm indifferent, surely you know, you'd expect that that means that it's not the case that I want to uh, exercise. And, and there with want, you know, a, a, a natural contrast is with a stronger term is with need. And, and if, you, if you consider the example 24a, 24b, uh, John does not need to exercise. That's not interpreted as John needs to not exercise. Um, so, the, so the argument is um, that believe and think, presumably they, they mean something relatively weak because they're neg-raising uh, verbs and it's characteristic of neg-raising uh, verbs to, uh, to have a, a weak meaning. Um, one clarification I should make here is that what you, what you might think is, well, couldn't it be that, that the reason uh, that we have neg raising is because with these relatively weak terms, um, it's, it's actually the case that um, putting the negation outside of the operator and putting it inside the operator are logically equivalent. And that's, that's why we take them, to, um, we get neg raising. So this would be a view on which, uh, let's just take O to be any neg raising operator, where not, um, not operator P 
would actually be, would be logically equivalent to operator uh, not p. Um, and so if you had such a logical equivalence, that would, that would immediately uh, explain why, why you got, uh, why you got neg raising, because it would actually be logically uh, valid. But there's a reason why that cannot be what's going on in any of these uh, cases. Uh, and the, the reason is that with all these cases, with, uh, with belief, with thinking, with wanting, um, and uh, others of the same uh, kind, there's, there's always a, a neutral state possible in, in which you're simply perfectly balanced by, between P and not P. As where you, in the doxastic case, uh, you have no, no belief of, in one as opposed to the other. You, even you know, you, you, um, and um, I mean that's, that's the, if you like the fifty-fifty case. And in the desire case, it's where it's where you're just perfectly indifferent between the two things. And so, it, in those um, neutral cases, uh, where you're where you're perfectly balanced between P and not P. Uh, it's going to be the case that, that operator p, if and only if uh, operator not p, because whatever attitude do you have to p, you have the same attitude to its negation. Oh, yeah, sorry. But people don't listen. Okay. Now, a clarification on weak and strong beyond the metaphorical sense, because yes. you, you, we can apply it both to beliefs and to wantings or desires. Yes. So is there a technical definition for a state to be weak or, or is just, because I understand it, in a, I grasp it intuitively, why need is stronger than want. Yes. But I, uh, because, well, yeah. Yeah, so in the, um, in the case of, uh, of be believing and being sure, the, 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 there's just a logical sense. I mean, roughly, I think that, it, roughly speaking, if, you, uh, if you're sure that P, then that implies that you believe that P, but, but the idea is that the implication fails in the opposite direction. Um, want and um, need, it's, it's not a perfect case because, um, I mean, w wanting doesn't imply needing, but it's also the case that needing doesn't imply w w wanting. And, and so uh, it's, it, that's a slightly misleading example because they're not, they're not perfectly on the same um, scale. But, but you know, if you, I mean, in the case of wanting, um, I mean, even, Even desire is a bit stronger than want, and and I don't think you get what neg raising very very strongly with desire. If you say you don't, I don't desire to do something, it um, then I don't think that that's interpreted quite as I you know that you desire not to to do it. And um, but but you can also do, you can also do it with complex constructions where where it, it's clear that they're all on the same, same scale. So. Um, you know, if you say, I don't very much want to do it, that is not interpreted as, as I very much <laughs> want n not to do it. And, and so the, um, so the, the, as, well, the, 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 and there, there is a, a, just a straightforward logical relation that, you know, that if you very much want to do something, then you, then you, you want. want to do it. But if you want to do it, it doesn't follow you that you very much want to, to do it. So, so I think the, um, as well, typically we're talking ab um, about you know a logical. But then relation, it's a comparison. It's, so it's not that the state is weak or strong in itself. But but, it's but I think it's the thing is that there's a corresponding thing on the scale because if we're t if w where we're talking um, about um, you know if there's a scale of you know intensity of desire right and and we're talking and so. So wanting is un understood to be, you know, at least as high on the scale as this, and um, and then um, and, and then very much wanting might be the, the, as well higher up on the scale. So that the so that you'll actually get some kind of correlation between the um, 
between the logical relations and the and the intensities because of the um, the way that th these things are being scaled. So sorry, this means that the same instance, so different instances of the same mental state can have can be stronger or weaker. So yes, so, so that and, and which is surely right that I mean there are a lot we, we, there are lots of things that we want, but some of them we want more than others. Okay. Um, and uh, and then and then. A, in a given mental state, several of these diff several different descriptions can be true of, of you. So, some of which, as it were, require, require l more than than others. Um, it's, it, okay. Yeah. Yeah. A, yeah. I have other, but maybe later on. Yes. Um. yes. Wait. <laughs> Sorry, I missed what you were saying about wanting and desiring. Were you treating them on a par? No, I was thinking that desiring is a bit stronger than wanting. I don't think it's hugely stronger, but, it, but it's a bit stronger, I think. So, and it, is it a strength that reflects on the fact that the second may, makes neg raising? I don't think desire neg raises as, as easy. Uh, uh, doesn't feel to me like a, a straightforward case of, of neg raising. I, I think desire kind of ra resists neg raising more um, in a way that wanting doesn't. I think. Um, okay, I, I, I think in Italian I get. If I say Mary non desidera fare questo, it means that she, she desires not to do it. I see. Uh, but mm, okay. I mean, the thing is, it's it's, it's not a it's not a super clear case because desire is it's not it's not very much stronger than want, but I think it's a little bit stronger and, and correspondingly uh, resists. Um, whereas, um, whereas, it, but whereas, you know, in, in I mean. It, Intensely, you know, if you put in, uh, intensely desire, I don't intensely, I mean, that, to make it really strong then, I don't intensely desire such and such, does not imply I intensely desire not to <laughs> such and such. Okay. Um, and and oh, another, another term uh, of, in this range, which is perhaps uh, also pretty weak, is like, right? So, you know, it's... Um, You know, if you if you if you don't if you don't like to do something, you like not to do <laughs> to do it. Roughly speaking, I mean, it, it, um, if you if if you say that you don't like ice cream, that will typically be interpreted as saying that that you, as it were, have a positive have a, have a negative attitude to ice cream. So it it would be. You know, if I if I say, um, you know, I'm I'm completely indifferent to ice cream, and then you say, so you don't like ice cream, it's oddly that sounds as if you're contradicting me, even though presumably uh, in a neutral state you you, you don't <laughs> that's not a liking state, um, so that that so that ne so liking does it does uh, in some sense neg raise, even though it doesn't in any straightforward way take a. a, a Propositional object, and so, so things like also assume are on the scale. Um, assume, yes. No, that's a good. Ex I'm not because I don't. Because get yeah, I, I don't I think don't get the neg raising. Yeah, I don't think assume does neg raise. Uh, yeah. But uh, in which sense is it stronger or than than believe? I mean. So, it. I mean, it's not obvious. I mean, no. This is to follow Anna's question because, in a sense. You know, I mean, why, why is it assumed uh, stronger than believe? I mean, yeah. th th there's a need to, to say more about what stronger means, yeah, what the relevant scale is. Yes. Is. I, so, yes, in the case of assume, I, uh, um, it it seems a bit different in in the. the um, well, I, I mean, I, a lot, well, at least some of the time, assume can be. Can be used for, as it were, something rather specific that you do in the course of an argument. I mean, you make an assumption, you know, and you, so you can um, say that you know I'm I'm not assuming such and such in this argument. But um, 
So, I mean, I, I, I agree that the sense in which we're talking about terms with, uh, w you know, what counts as a term with a weak meaning and so on, it, I, I haven't given a precise definition of, of that. Um, and uh, I'm, I, I, don't, I don't have a precise uh, definition of it, but it, it does seem to, um, to be a phenomenon that in some kind of pre-theoretic sense is, it, or semi-pre-theoretic sense, is associated with, with terms with a relatively weak meaning, where they, which are, where they're not, uh, as it were, um, describing a relatively un unusual version of the state or anything, or anything like that. And so, um, so this is, I mean, insofar as, so this argument is, um, you know, it's, it's, not in, it's, it's not intended by, by Hawthorne, uh, Rothschild and Spectre as a knockdown argument or anything. It's, it's more like uh, believe is behaving in this way that is characteristic of terms of w with a somewhat <laughs> weak um, meaning that just is as it were, which covers lots and lots and lots of uh, cases. And, uh, and so, we, so we wouldn't expect... We wouldn't expect it to stand for a very, any very strong level, level of commitment. That's that's the kind of picture that, that, that they're giving. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, they've got a bunch of other <laughs> arguments which I'm going to get uh, get onto. But I mean, I, I agree that it would be um, it would be nice to have a, a much more precise description of what the of what the phenomenon is. Um, I, I, and I'm I'm not. I'm not going to provide that. And, but w w w just to carry on with, with the point that I was making here. This, so this, the point I was making here was just that w what we can't do is understand neg raising as a genuinely logical point. That it, as we're where the, uh, it, it's, where by that I mean it, it, a point where w what's really being shown is that a, a certain operator c basically commutes with negation. And the reason we can't is because we have these neutral states. Um, and, and so if you look what we've got here, we've got um, that because of, as it were, this supposedly logically neg raising operator, not OP is equivalent to O of not P. But then in, in the particular case where you, you have the, uh, the neutral attitude, where you're neutral between P and not P, then you also have uh, operator of P if and only if operator of not P. And then, of course, we've got on the right-hand side, we've got operator of not P um, both times. So that would mean that we would have to have, um, in, these, in these neutral cases, not uh, operator P equivalent to operator P, which is a contradiction. I mean, you can't, uh, uh, you can't have something which is equivalent to... Uh, it's negation, at least n n not in, in classical uh, logic, um, and, uh, and and so it it cannot be a a, a purely logical uh, point. Um, just just to to mention, since we're on the the semantics uh, of this, um, it well in principle it it could. Be, I mean, one, for all that I've said, it could be that we have operators which, as it were, uh, we're putting them inside the um, the scope of negation is is nearly always uh, equivalent in truth value to uh, to outside. So that, for example, you know, if if we had, um, you know, if you have a, a relation like a credence of at least fifty percent, then. Um, it, it, in all cases, except where somebody has a credence of uh, exactly uh, fifty percent, as long as they're obeying the, um, the the axioms of mathematical probability, that they'll have um, an, a, a credence of at least fifty percent in uh, P, um, if and only if they don't have a credence of at least fifty percent in, in not P, and um, or. Uh, but but the, so the, that that as it were we ha it could be that we're dealing with ones which 
um, almost commute with negation. I mean, they, they do in almost all cases. I mean, the, or the effect is uh, uh, the same in all, uh, or the truth value, that is, uh, in almost all cases. And, um, I mean, the, 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 there's some reason to, uh, to think that what I mean, one possibility of what's going on here is is a, a slightly str strange phenomenon that you get with, with uh, conversational uh, implicature, where um, quite a few conversational implicatures depend on the um, the assumption that. Uh, the agents being described are, as it's called, opinionated. That they have a, they have beliefs about everything. So, you know, if you have something like, um, let's see, John believes that um, some of the cake was eaten. Then. It's quite natural to hear that as sort of conversationally implying that um, that John believes that this is definitely a conversational implication, not an entailment. But John believes that um, not all of the cake was eaten. I mean, it'd be very, very natural to, to, to go from from this. Uh, to this, just just as a as a conversational implicature, um, but but one thing, I mean, in the same way as you of, we often go from the simple statement, "some of the cake was eaten," to the implicature that um, that uh, not all of the cake was eaten, uh, which isn't it's not an entailment. If all of the cake was eaten, then some of the cake was eaten. But um, but it, it, the you know, in the simple case, we're assuming that. The, the speaker was, does have an opinion about wh whether all of the cake was eaten, and so is not saying the stronger thing because they don't think it's true. But, um, but even in, in when we're talking about reports of belief, here we're really assuming that, in effect, that um, not simply that John, it, that it's not the case that John believes that all of the cake was eaten, but that he actually believes that not all of it was eaten. Um, where, um, and so we're assuming that John has an opinion about whether all of the cake was eaten or, or not. And um, and and, and there, I think there, are, I mean, there are quite a number of examples where uh, the calculating these conversational implicatures depends on uh, assuming that. Uh, the, the people being des described in, in the examples have opinions about everything, or um, in some cases, if we're talking about knowledge, have knowledge about all the relevant uh, facts. And, um, and so this might be part of what's going on in, in the neg raising cases. And you know, it could be that, that it's sort of easier to, to, um, to get the, the, the negation, oh, as it were, um, transferring across the operator uh, by, it might be by some kind of conversational Im implicature because uh, most of the time it, it won't make a difference to uh, truth value. So that's, I mean, that would be one possible, possible view that would be consistent with the sort of case that um, Hawthorne and the others are argue. By the way, uh, w just while I, I think to, to mention it, I, sh I should say that, that at least two of the authors of that paper have somewhat changed their position since the paper was published. So um, it, we're talking about the, the views described in the paper, not about their current views. Um, anyway, I, 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 I don't want to get too, too much into, into that issue. So there's, there's a second line of uh, argument which, uh, which they uh, use in the paper. Um, which uh, has to do with uh, questions like um, who who do you believe 
uh, will win the election, or who do you believe will win the race, or um, you know, what do you believe, or uh, 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 has some some property, uh, and so on. Um, uh, if if you if you if you try googling uh, th these kind of phrases, one of the things that comes up most frequently is. Uh, questions of the form, you know, who do you believe will be the next to be thrown off the reality TV show or something? I mean, they, um, and the, the so, uh, so supposing we take the question, you know, who do you believe will win the World Cup? Um, the, the presupposition of that question is that there is some team such that you believe that it will win the World Cup. Now, of course, I mean, it's probably, I mean, although I'm no football expert, but it's probably unreasonable at the present state of the World Cup to have a credence of as much as 50% in any one particular team winning it. Right? I mean, you know, even if, you're, even if your favorite, you know, favorite team is, you know, let's say Brazil or something, the, you know, probably you don't think that, that they're more likely than not to win the World Cup. You don't, the most you, you're going to think is that, that they have a higher probability than any other team of winning the World Cup. But, you know, it might only be, you know, 25% or something. Um, because there are, I mean, there are a lot of t teams in, and uh, and so w when w when we're dealing with this question, um, it seems that we're not even required to to give a, a, a an answer I mean, where our, our credence is at least fifty percent. Which, which just, it just has to be the highest, the highest credence of, of the available candidates, and um, and it, it would be it would be exactly the same um, if if you asked the question with think uh, rather than uh, believe. Who do you think will win the, the World Cup? Um, but it would be totally different if you used words like sure or confident or whatever. I mean, if 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 you, if I asked you who are you confident will win the World Cup, I mean, you you know, the reasonable thing I think for most people would be to say there's no team that I'm confident will win the World Cup, and there's no team that I'm sure will win win will win the World Cup, um, and and so so they the, the authors of the paper they, they take it that uh, really. Um, we're, we're dealing with a, a term which can, uh, can in, in suitable contexts, be used for uh, a very low level of credence, provided that it's higher than, as it were, the rivals. And, um, and so the, the sorts of the conclusions uh, that, they, uh, that they come to um, are... The, um, that um, uh, these are on page the, near the top of page three of the handout. That they say outright belief is not a disambiguation of what we ordinarily mean by belief. Rather, it seems a theoretical posit. The the everyday notion of belief is a weak one, and and then they offer what they call a rough preliminary account, which is that. Uh, to believe something might require a it be significantly more likely than the salient alternatives and b it be above some contextually determined threshold of likeliness um, so so that for example and and so this is a this is a, a an account which where um what what you kind of believing in inverted commas uh it depends on the conversational context so if the if the which is uh in many of these cases is set by the, the question under discussion. So if the question under discussion uh, is who will win the World Cup, you, you can say, I believe that uh, Brazil uh, will win, let's say. Um, and, uh, and you could say that even if your, your confidence level is just 25%, but, but, but for any other team, it's, it's at most 20%. But then if the question changed to will Brazil win the World Cup, 
then uh, the old salient alternatives are Brazil win, Brazil don't win. And then since for in that context, um, the, the highest probabilities for them not winning, that in, that, in that context, it, it's not true that you believe that, they, that Brazil will win. So it depends on what the, the contrast class uh, is. Um, and uh, th th so there's a, there's a variety of, um, of data that they, they use in support of this. And, and one, w w that remark about it, that um, not, e not being a disambiguation of, um, of the full belief not being a disambiguation of belief is uh, because they have an argument that it, it, suppose suppose that, that that these terms believe and or, or think were uh, were ambiguous in, in particular suppose that the, the uh, believers and that as it were some of the time they took a, a weak meaning and some of the time they took a strong uh, meaning um, they then with a sentence well I like the another football example at the top of page three on the um, like 25 he thinks Spurs will win but it's not that he believes that they will win they will um, so it, but the reason it's, it, it's not that he believes is to, if they put it in that slightly awkward way just to, or, or the, with their own examples, uh, in order to, to block the neg raising, because by, by being sufficiently elaborate about the negation, you can tend to, to block the neg raising. But um, see, if it was a simple case of ambiguity, then it should be possible to uh, hear... 25 as true because uh, you could hear the think in in a weak sense uh, and the believes in a strong sense um, but it, it but it doesn't sound it doesn't sound good it doesn't seem that as it were that kind of reading is uh, available um, and and then with the with the account that um, I mean, they're, they're suggesting that to, to, to believe is equivalent to, some, to something like to think likely. Uh, they have examples like uh, 26, where, or, or to think is to think like. John thinks it's likely Levi is in Sweden, but he doesn't go far as to think Levi is in Sweden, uh, you know, which sounds pretty bad. And uh, with 27, with, which, same, but except with believes rather than thinks, that John believes it's likely Levi is in Sweden, but he doesn't go so far as to think Levi is in Sweden. Um, so that uh, uh, they're in effect arguing for a, co a collapse of, um, of believing into believing likely, whereas, uh, of course, last time I was arguing that these are very different things, because believing likely seems to be a, a belief about what is likely rather than just a simple belief about what is the, uh, the case. Um, so I, I want to say a number of things in resistance to uh, this argument. Um, so the first is about that, the last example with 26 and, and 20, uh, seven with believe, uh, where we seem to not to be able to get believing likely um, without uh, believing. Um, so there's a kind of a, a technical phenomenon here um, which is actually quite significant um, with a lot of examples in uh, semantics and philosophy of language, um, which is that intonation often makes quite a significant uh, difference to whether examples sound good or, or bad. Um, and there's, there's, there's been a tendency to, to insist on a sort of flat intonation without special emphasis on anything, because pe people 
want to avoid the kind of, as it were, cheating that can go on when you put special emphasis on, on words and, uh, as it were, force the hearer to understand things in an unusual uh, way. And, and, you know, I think that's, uh, that's a well-meaning tendency, but it has, it has limitations because there are cases where the speaker is expected to, uh, t to put some emphasis on certain terms. Um, and, and so that if you don't put any emphasis, it's, it's going to sound quite unnatural. And one of these cases actually has to do with, uh, with contrast. So if you look at 28, um, if you just read 28 um, with a kind of more or less flat intonation, like uh, Levi went to Sweden, but he didn't fly to Sweden, uh, um, then it sounds quite puzzling. But the reason it sounds puzzling um, is, is because you're, making a, you're drawing a contrast. And normally, when you draw a contrast between uh, two sides, which are uh, uh, two um, clauses or whatever it is that, that, that are very similar, what the speaker is expected to do is to emphasize the bits where they contrast with each other, just to help the hearer to focus on the crucial contrast. And so, you know, with 28, the way you ought to say it is, Levi went to Sweden, but he didn't fly to Sweden, right? So, so to help the reader to understand that the, the, the relevant contrast is between just go going somewhere and flying somewhere. Um, and, and once you say it like that, it, it's fine. And, and so you have to be, to be careful with, with 26 and 27 um, to give them the kind of emphasis, uh, the uh, intonation, that, that would be expected when you were drawing a contrast between two things which uh, are mainly, the, as with two clauses which are mainly the same as each other, um, but where there is one significant difference. And so, um, so with, with 26, uh, the... Uh, the, the right way to, to say it is 26 plus. John thinks it's likely Levi is in Sweden, but he doesn't go so far as to think Levi is in Sweden. Um, and, or with 27, John believes it's likely Levi is in Sweden, but he doesn't go so far as to think Levi is in Sweden. Um, and uh, to, uh, to, my, to my ear, uh, 26 plus and 27 plus, I, the ones with the, the emphasis on the contrasting bits of the two clauses sound a lot better than, um, than the, the 26 and 27 with, uh, with flat uh, intonation. Um, I think Sandra was, was actually asking me afterwards about what, what happens where you put um, something... In place of um, beliefs of the kind that I would, you know, I would l take as um, an equivalent, you know, in terms of knowledge, like um, treat treating the proposition as if you as if you knew it. So, and and making the point that. Um, it doesn't seem that you that that in those cases you need the the special uh, emphasis to achieve the uh, effect. Um, but I th I think I think that w the one thing that goes on here is that in some cases, um, if the if the if the wording is sufficiently different as whether the contrast is so is so. Um, salient that you don't need to uh, to put emphasis so that for example if i said um levi went to sweden but he didn't take the most expensive method of transport to sweden or something like that i don't need to i don't think i need to put um special a lot of intonation or emphasis uh, i mean non-flat intonation that, um on that because the the wording is so different with taking the most expensive uh, route. So, so I, I mean, I'm sorry to, to uh, as I were, spend so much time on these kind of 
uh, technicalities. But um, they, they really do make a, a difference uh, to, to w w what, w what sounds good and what doesn't. And, and th these questions of what sound, uh, sounds good and what doesn't, I mean, they, they really d do cast light on what exactly it is that we're talking about when, when we use these terms. So, so we, we can't just afford to be um, blasé uh, about, about them. We, we do have to sort of control the, the, what's, going, uh, what's going on with them. Maybe I'll stop for, yeah, uh, yes, Sandra. Sorry, I was already asking. Um, so th this explanation that you give for um, uh, why, why uh, you know, um, they say that 27 is, is uh, or 26 is, is, uh, is bad. I mean, in fact, if you give the right, if you give it the right intonation, yeah. it becomes much better. But then you, you still don't have an explanation for 25, right? Yeah, um, because intonation here doesn't seem to change. Right. Uh, so, so in twenty, in twenty-five. Yeah. So let, let me. Say, I can. I can say something about that now. So I'll. I'll. I'll, I'll give you another little bit of the, the talk because because it's it's a no. It's, it's fine. It, it 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 doesn't really matter which order we do this. In. So I, I agree that. Um, that in the case of 25, he thinks Spurs will win, but it's not that he believes they, they will. I don't, I don't think w the reason it sounds bad is because of la the lack of emphasis. I think uh, the, the reason is something like this. Well, the, the, I mean, there are two points I want, I want to make. One is that a, a curious feature of the argument in this paper that I'm discussing is that they respond to the idea that, that think and believe might be ambiguous in the, in the sense of having you know, several, as it were, lexical, different lexical entries um, by arguing that, that we just can't, that if they were ambiguous, we should be able to uh, hear um, you know, one of them being used in a weak sense and the other being used in a non-weak sense. But what they don't respond to is the idea that um, these terms are context uh, sensitive and <coughs> that in some contexts they, they uh, stand for um, the, what philosophers have called outright belief and in other contexts they don't. And that, that's not, I mean, co context dependence is not the same phenomenon as ambiguity because, I mean, the context dependence of tall, for example, doesn't require that tall have lots and lots of um, lexical entries because, I mean, for example, with tall, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it, you know, it's notorious that, 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 that if we're talking about uh, jockeys, you know, horse riders, um, then, then tall is one standard of tall for them, but if we're talking, you know, in a context where we're talking about basketball players, there's a completely different standard of tall. And, and of course, you don't expect that when you look up the word tall in a dictionary, there'll be, you know, w w one uh, lexical entry for, for jockeys and a different en lexical entry for uh, basketball players and so on, you know, ad infinitum. Uh, it's just that, that what we need is uh, some kind of single definition which takes account of the, the fact that the the operative standard may depend on context. And what's, what's really odd um, in, in their paper is that, they, that although they themselves are giving um, a context-sensitive account of the semantics of belief, they don't respond to the idea that somebody might de defend the availability of uh, the standard of outright belief as, as something that, that can be the operative one in some contexts, you know, on behalf of their opponents. I mean, if you look at the, the, the account that they gave, um, so it, clause B is explicitly context dependent because it says it, it, that the, um, the, the, the proposition in question B above some contextually determined threshold of likeliness. Um, but clause A is also, I think, implicitly context dependence because it, it says it, it be significantly more likely than the salient alternatives. And I think the salient alternatives are meant to be the ones that are salient in the conversational uh, context, depending on what question has been asked. Now, 
uh, and so the, the, the question, so the first thing to say is that the relevant question with uh, 25 is, um, is not whether there's, as it were, a, a disambiguation of it which makes it true, but whether there's, there's some context in which it's uh, true, it says something true. Now, you might think, but isn't, isn't the problem that then still uh, we can't find such a context? Um, but I, I think that what's going on here is, is something rather more general, which is that it's a, a kind of perhaps slightly surprising limitation of the uh, uh, extent to which we can have accommodation in David Lewis's sense, where accommodation is where we, we uh, as it were, adjust the uh, interpretation of, of what uh, speakers have said um, in such a way as to make it come out true, as well. So we, we, we it kind of where there are contextually variable standards, we kind of raise or lower them in a way that's as charitable as we can manage to the uh, to the speakers, and uh, and there are cases where it, it, in a sense, that would be it would be feasible it, in a way that would be feasible, but but where we we don't seem to get accommodation and. And I think one gets this quite often in cases where you have two terms which, at least in the relevant sorts of uses, are, are treated as pretty much synonymous. Um, so, but are nevertheless context dependent. So, uh, in English, it doesn't really make much difference whether you talk about a tall tower or a high tower. You know, I, th I think they're, they're more or less equivalent to each other. I mean, but of course, it's. Um, it is context dependent because you know a, a, a tower might uh, you know a given height of tower may count as uh, tall in in San Gimignano but not tall in New York or something um, and and so you if you look at uh, an example like thirty one that is a tall tower but not a high tower you might think oh well surely we can accommodate that because um, because all we need to do is to 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 make the the standard uh, the threshold for the application of high be be higher than the um, threshold for the application of tall but that that's as it were easier said than done i mean it, it, but so to my ear if if somebody says that's a tall you know th that's a tall tower but it's not a high tower the natural reaction is what are you talking about? <laughs> um, wh 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 why are you saying that? Uh, um, and um, uh, e even though, uh, as I say, the, the, you know, the, there's technically that we, we could we could accommodate uh, um, by you know ju just by this, uh, treating the standard for for one of these contextual terms as a uh, contextually sensitive terms as as different from the standard for the other, and uh, and it sort of seems that that. It, that we're very reluctant to do that, um, but what we're expecting is there to be, as it were, a contextually um, set threshold on this scale, but may, and maybe for towers or something. But but the, that that the both terms should be picking up the same um, uh, threshold, uh, and you know, an, another example. Um, of exactly the, the same f phenomena is with 32, that they're like each other but not similar to each other. You know, again, it seems to me the natural reaction is just complete puzzlement at what on earth the speaker is getting at when they say that. Um, and and that, that we're not happy just, just to, to set different, different standards for these two terms, which are, you know, I mean, like and similar, uh, which are, are, you know, give or take a nuance or two, are pretty much equivalent uh, to each other. And, and then, and so I, I, I suggest that what's going on with think and believe in 25 is, is that, that, that in lo at least in a lot of contexts, not not uh, th then uh, think and believe they're not totally equivalent to each other, and they, they do differ in some ways that I will talk about uh, later. But but for many many purposes, th they're more or less the same, and uh, and so that um, th the fact that we that we that we can't um, 
say, well, one apply, in effect, one applies and the other doesn't, but, but because we're going to set different uh, contextual standards for the two words. That's, that, that's not something that you can easily uh, do. Um, it, even though, as it were, in a way, it's, it's kind of obvious uh, how to do it, because, because we, we, we're expecting the, the standard to be set, not, wor as it were, w differently for different words which are tr treated as uh, equivalent. So, sorry, that's a, very, that's a, a long winded answer, but that, that's what I think is happening with 25. You don't think that uh, there's an ambiguity there, but just context dependency, just context dependence. and that reflects is reflected in your, say, analysis of what uh, believe is treat treat P as if you knew it, um, because there's an implicit similarity uh, appeal to similarity, which and the standard similarity is itself context dependent. That's that's the idea. Yeah, I is guess, if, yes, if we, I mean, that would be a further implementation of it, yes. But I think e e even without the connection with knowledge, we could, we could make this point in the sense that, um, that thinks, thinks and believes, and they're not normally contrasted terms. Um, and e even though they, 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 they may each be context dependent, the, the assumption is that they're, they're being governed by the same threshold. And, and so you, you can't easily m make a contrast bet between them. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> no, I thought that the, the, um, bringing in knowledge uh, was important because in the case, in the example that you give for tall and high, yeah. clearly there's a parameter there which is tall with respect to what. Yes with the, the reference class uh, uh, and uh, um, so it's important to individuate for belief what is the yes the, the, the element that makes it context yes. context dependent and your analysis does it uh, yeah so so my yeah my an analysis gives, it, it it gives uh, one sort of view of that but I mean I think if but just the the idea that that we're that we've got a certain sort of scale is um, of you know of, of levels of commitment or something like that would be would be enough to 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 get the the sort of overall structural analogy with 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 tall and high for you for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, um, there's another question. I mean, is, 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 are there, if there are other questions. I, I'll ask it afterwards. Um, there's, there's another question, going back to the Negre's uh, cases. Um, okay, I know you, you don't like to do this substitution of the analysis yeah. with, uh, with uh, the verb believe, but um, it seems to me that why I get uh, the, that if I say Mary believes, Mary doesn't believe it's raining, there's a natural interpretation, which is that she believes it's not raining. If I say Mary does not treat the proposition that it was raining as if she knew it, did not treat the proposition yes. that it was, as if she knew it, I don't get any uh, implication there that, um, that um, um, Mary treats uh, the proposition that it will not rain, as if she knew. Yes. It. So, but I, I think that that ne I mean, neg raising it, it is quite sensitive to the, the form of words that you use. So, supposing we. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I take it that, that believing and being, being in the state of believing are, are the same thing. Um, but, you know, if, if we said um, Mary is not in the state of believing, towards the proposition that 
that it's raining. Uh, I think it would, it would be very, uh, very uh, uh, odd to, to go from that to Mary is, uh, automatically, Mary is in the state of believing as we're to, directed towards, I guess we should say, towards the proposition that it is not raining. So e even though all I've, all I've really done there is, is put the, uh, does, you know, does not believe in a kind of more verbose way, but that seems to be enough to block the neg raising. And um, you know, and, and, and maybe what's going on, you know, if, if for example, the neg raising is, involves some kind of conversation and plicature, um, then it, it might be enough to block the conversational and plicature in some, in some cases. I mean, that, that we just use a form of words which suggests I'm choosing my words very carefully here. <laughs> and and that, that might be en enough to stop, stop people drawing, you know, what if we speak, you know, in the, just in the kind of colloquial way would be the, um, the natural uh, conversational implicature. Um, I mean, it, 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 of course, it, this will. Do, I mean, it's it's not as though that this will always block conversational um, implicatures. You know, if I mean, if you take, I mean, if you take the kind of classic Gricean cases of you know where you write a reference for a student and you know say, you, you say his 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 handwriting is good and you know his attendance has been uh, lectures has been regular or something, uh, with the implication that the student. <laughs> Uh, it has no, there's nothing better to be said for them than that. I mean, you know, if, if, you, um, if you replaced handwriting, you know, handwriting is good by uh, his performance in uh, the domain, you know, that might be termed orthography uh, is excellent or something. I mean, that, would, that wouldn't block the conversational picture. But, but in this, but in, in, in these cases, uh, where the where the, the, the implicature seems to be coming from um, from a, a somewhat different source, it, it do, does seem to be uh, that, that you can sometimes block the uh, the implicature j just by being kind of pedantic sounding. <laughs> I mean, obviously, one would like a, a more a, a proper account of when that can happen and why it, it can can happen. But but I think that's a, I mean that's a reason for thinking that you know um, one would even even if a, a certain kind of um, definition is correct that you that that substituting the definiens for the definiendum. M m might be enough to bl to block neg raising because it, the the definiens may be sufficiently elaborate to to tell people that that be careful here don't make don't make easy moves as it were as it were. Thanks. I have another question concerning the previous argument you presented, uh, uh, combining the neg raising. Uh, and the one you deleted oh, on the yes. board. Uh, with, the, with the so this was as I think the, the not uh, oh, yes. op if and only if o not, not p, p and, and and then the well as we're putting it slightly more economically the o not p if and only if o p because of in the neutral case and right. then which as it were implies that these are equivalent. To each other because they're equivalent to the same thing, and so that OP and is equivalent to not OP, and, and then that's the contradiction. Yes. Right, but my my impression is that one kind of by conditional 
uh, is accepted in a different case from the case in which we accept the other uh, biconditional. Namely, the neck raising case is a case which we accept in the case in which we believe that the subject has a certain mental attitude towards the content. While uh, the other biconditional is a one which we accept when we consider that the subject doesn't want, uh, want to be neutral and so doesn't have an attitude. So I'm not sure that we have to accept them at the same time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so so th th this equivalence of OP and O not P definitely, I was just asserting that for the case where the subject is neutral. Um, but the, the suggestion that, that, the suggestion I was considering here was that, that the reason why we treat not OP and O not P as equivalent um, is because they're actually, they actually are logically equivalent. Um, and, and so if, if there was a logical equivalence here, it, um, it would, it would, that would be, as it were, a completely general one. It, it wouldn't depend on the, the circumstances of the, um, the subject or anything like that. It would just be a pure logical coincidence, uh, a logical equivalence, rather. And so, as it were, we would have, so we would have the, this horizontal equivalence between not OP and O not P in, in every case. And then we would just have the equ equivalence of O not, not P and Oops, sorry, this should have to be a double arrow there. And uh, OP um, in, the, in the neutral case, but then combining them, since so, so we'd still have the logical equivalence in the neutral case, then in the neutral case, we would have a, an equivalence of OP with uh, not OP, which would just be a, a contradiction in classical logic. Yes, what I don't see is that the logical equivalence should be accepted in the neutral case. Because the example we accept in order to accept this logical equivalence are examples in which we accept that the subject has a particular state of mind. But, uh, but, that but in the a, case, yeah. uh, it, he doesn't have a state of mind. That's what we actually exclude from the reading. So I mean, when we consider Mary doesn't think that it, uh, it, it will rain, uh, we are not considering the case Mary doesn't have a, a, an attitude towards raining, but we are assuming that it is equivalent to Mary thinks it will not rain because Mary has a, we are describing a certain kind of attitude of Mary. But the, the thing is, this, the, the, so, well, two points. What, one is that the hypothesis I was considering is just one where there's a general logical equivalence, but where the, the the O and the negation just, just logically commute. So that, that would be irrespective of uh, the particular circumstances of the example. But also, if you consider the examples, um, I didn't prime you with any uh, information about, about Mary. I just, you know, I just gave you the sentence, uh, um, Mary doesn't believe that it's raining. Or, uh, and, and then, just hearing that sentence is uh, enough to, for us to, as it were, to interpret the speaker as saying that Mary be believes that it's not raining. Right? So that it, it's not as though that you need any kind of, as it were, inside information about about Mary or anything like that. To, to make this jump of neg raising. It's, it's an, all, all that you had to go on was the, the, speak, the form of the speaker's statement itself. And, and, and it, that was enough um, for us to, to jump from, you know, not believes to believes not. Um, and, and so if, if we're looking for an, an explanation for, for why we should make that jump. It's, it, it's at least natural to, to consider the hypothesis that we're making it because it is simply logically valid. 
give for these particular operators to, uh, with negation. So that, because it's, it seems like it's, it's, we don't need extra information to be, uh, to be willing to make the jump. We just make it on hearing the, the statement without as we're knowing anything particular about Mary. So. so, but suppose that we know that Mary is a kind of a very uncertain person. And so uh, someone asks, does Mary believe that it will rain? And we can answer no. She doesn't have that belief. But we cannot accept in this case, whoever accept this answer or adopt this answer uh, will not accept the jump, to jump to the other one. Well, but, but you put it in, in a kind of specially guarded right. form, you see. She, yeah. do, she doesn't have the belief. And, mm. you know, and I think it's... Um, if, with a lot of these neg raising things, if you put, if you if you put it in these more kind of artificial but careful formulations, it's enough to block the you know um, you know so for example you know you know if I say about John, um, it is not the case that John has a liking for ice cream. Uh, you know, probably putting it in that kind of careful way is enough that we won't jump to the conclusion that he dislikes ice cream. Um, and, you know, and so putting it in the form that you did, where Mary, it, Mary does not have the belief that so-and-so is, is, you know, uh, I mean, it's like the, the, the formulation that, that, that they use or, or that's used in 25. It's, it's not that he believes they will. Which is that's that, that as we're, it, we're using these slightly artificial formulations to, to in order to block the, the neg raising because if if we had neg raising that would that would with that example that would be a completely different phenomenon uh, explanation for, for why it was it was bad um, and so so one I mean one feature of uh, of neg raising is that it's it's relatively easy to block. You, you, uh, and you can, you can, as it were, just by um, a, a more elaborate form of words, without without making a real logical difference, you could, uh, or uh, it seems you can you can block you can block neg raising. Right. I, I wonder if it, well, I think, yeah, if there are other questions, then, uh, yes, yeah, sure. Then, yeah. I think okay. Well, it's still on neck raising, so maybe I yeah, yeah. So I still struggle to see how neck raising, uh, to see neck raising as a test for weakness or, um, or strength. And my, because my, uh, that's something Sandra mentioned before, and that was the origin of my question. So I was thinking of cases like supposing, assuming, imagining. Uh, this all, they don't seem to give right to neck raising, but they are clearly, or to me, uh, or maybe I don't understand what weak means, but. Uh, and even occurring, if I say, I was thinking, so it didn't even occur to Mary that it, was, uh, it will rain. You don't, uh, and occurring to me is weaker than believing. Yes. But it doesn't mean, if I say this, it doesn't mean it occurred to Mary that it didn't rain. And one, one hypothesis I was thinking, but probably is not, is that it seems to be related to the occurrence versus dispositional um, nature of some states, but I'm not sure it, it works because with wanting, I don't know, because it seems that in all these cases, imagine, we take imagining, supposing, and to be necessarily occurrent, and this is why, but I'm not sure this is the right hypothesis to explain yeah. neck raising, but still, I struggle to see how neck raising reliably tells us about the weakness of strength. Is it clear? Well, what? yeah, but I mean, I think the, the fact that it's, it, it's difficult to give a notion of weakness which is sufficient for neg raising doesn't, doesn't mean that, that there couldn't be one which is necessary for, for neg raising. And so that, uh, as a way, it might be that although there are many weak terms which don't neg raise, it is only in some sense weak terms which do neg raise. I, I mean, here's another, I, I, don't, I don't think it's to do with dispositional versus occurrence. So uh, another example which is, is worth thinking about is the difference between uh, liking and loving, right? Um, so, you know, it, 
if I, if I say I don't like Susan, there's an implication that I dislike her. It, it, you know, I, I, I appear, strangely enough, to be ruling out the case where I'm simply indifferent to Susan if I say I don't, uh, I don't like her. But, it, but if I say I don't love Susan, that, that, is, that is not ruling out the, the, the neutral case. Uh, and it's certainly not saying, you know, that, that I... Um, well, it's, it's, leg raising is a bit funny with these things which are attitudes to people because it's, you know, it's not that, we, that, we ha that I'm going to have the love relation to the negation of Susan or something, but, but it's... Um, but there's... But it, as it were, in, I mean, you, if you think of it, I, I mean, this is, this is a bit loose, but if you think of it as ne neg raising as where when we deny one attitude, we're implying that we have the, as it were, if you like, the, the, the reverse attitude, right, okay. then, then don't like seems to, in some sense, at least conversationally imply dislike, but don't love doesn't conversationally imply hate. Right. And, and I take it that, that these are both, you know, the, m m these are both basically m m dispositional rather than, yeah, than yeah, occurring. Yeah, okay, that's right. Um, and wanting as well, yeah. So it's, yeah. You know, um, that hypothesis doesn't work. So... I mean, it's, it, it may be, a, as it were, a relatively limited phenomenon um, that, that, and, and one that we particularly get with, um, with relatively common words and, and, and so on. But, but it, 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 it does seem to, where it does occur, it does seem to occur for things which are at least you know, in, in some maybe somewhat pre-theoretic sense are, are, are weak attitudes. Are there other questions? Okay, Sandro. So, okay, I, I'm trying to equivocate on the analysis that you give in terms of knowledge. Uh, suppose that I, um, every time I know something, I, uh, I regard that as trivial because I sort of think that I cannot know anything that is not yes. trivial, right? And so, uh, believing P means treating P as um, uh, as I treat what I know. Yes. So I treat it as trivial. Um, th that's an unintended interpretation of your analysis, right? Yeah, uh, so... So, so um, when you say as one treats what one knows, I'm asking you to be more explicit about what the as one knows. Yes. As one treat what one so it... it I mean, so I mean, one way of dealing with that particular case is so the, uh, um, is to to say that it's um, to, that the one should be understood as uh, you know to to believe P is to um, treat P as agents who believe things. <laughs> Sorry, as agents as agents who know things treat those things. Uh, so that it doesn't act, it have to be the um, the same the same agent, I, and I mean that's definitely a move that you have to make anyway with respect to P itself, because um, you know, it, it, so I mean somebody might believe um, a, a, a proposition which is it, it's impossible to know, <laughs> and then and so we don't want to say that that for them to believe that proposition is for them to treat it in the way that people who know that very proposition treat it, because there might be no people who, who, um, who, who know that very proposition. And so, so we have to, uh, I mean, in such an account, we have to generalize away from the identity of the particular proposition. And I, I think it's, it's quite likely, in a way, 
partly in view of the sort of examples that you're giving, that we also have to generalize a, away from um, the, the particular agent involved. So, so, but don't you have also to uh, specify in which respect you treat it as similar? Yeah. I well, mean, and so to the, have a sort of yeah, and the and the res and the, but the respect uh, that which one treats is similar, but that I was emphasizing last time is in terms of its role in practical reasoning and that sort of thing. So, you could say, for example, level of commitment? Uh, well, but I think, yeah, but I think the, the, the specific kind of uh, the commitment that, we're con that I think is, seems to be important is something like willingness to rely on it as a premise in practical reasoning. So in, in rough, it, more briefly, just willingness to act on it. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, let's probably follow up to my yesterday question, the uh, willingness to act. So yesterday I brought a case where you are willing to act on a thing that doesn't seem to be a belief, like a pretense. But now I was thinking of cases where, where you, you don't seem to be committed in your, so if I understand what your commitment is, but still we want to ascribe the belief. Like uh, I was thinking, you know, Tamar Gandler cases of belief behavior mismatch, like the case uh, where there is uh, the sky wall, the Grand Canyon sky wall, like there is a, um, a bridge uh, over the canyon which is made of glass. And you are totally, you may be the engineer who made it up and you are totally confident that uh, uh, it is safe, but still you don't, you don't walk on it, you are not willing, uh, you, you see what yes. I mean? Yes. Uh, so So that's a case where, um, where you're, there's a particular action on it that, that, you're, that you're not willing uh, to take. Um, but but it's, I mean, I take it that's a very limited ph phenomenon. So, I mean, in fact, I've, so uh, there's, I, there's a tower in Toronto that, that my wife and I went uh, went up, and 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 there it you know it it has a, 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 there's a bit of glass floor that you can that you can go on, um, as my son would put it at deathfall height <laughs> above the ground, and um, and so so my my wife my wife couldn't bear to. Um, to, to, to stand on it, but but she was, of course, there's more than one interpretation of this. But but she was, but she was quite happy for me to go and stand on it, and 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 you know there were children running onto it, and she wasn't trying to stop them going on. And so you know it, it uh, there was a case where where um, she th there was as it were a, a, an ex if you like a, a, a case of extreme trust in it, where. Uh, that she, she wasn't that she wasn't willing to uh, to go for, um, but I th but I think it's clear that um, that she did believe that it was safe because if she hadn't I mean if she hadn't believed that it was safe even if she'd been as it were agnostic as to whether it was safe I think she'd have been trying to stop uh, the children running onto it and and maybe me running <laughs> running onto it and uh, and so on and so that I, you know I think it's and with, with pretty much. I mean, this is also the the case that I was mentioning about these bets, you know, where it's be, you know betting, you know, one euro against you know the, the being tortured and all your loved ones being tortured and so on. I mean, for um, for almost for almost anything um, that in almost any case of trust, that as where well, there are levels of trust that we wouldn't go to, um, and. You know, and I mean, that actually applies with trust in people as well, because in fact you can relate the two cases. Because if you, uh, you, you know, there are, um, I mean, you might have huge degrees of trust in someone, and yet, you know, when they when they said, "Look, walk out onto the glass; it's safe," you just wouldn't you wouldn't trust them on that because it, it was just too frightening, um, and uh, and so I think that's uh, that's one way in which. 
the, there are levels of confidence, which I don't, I don't think are the same thing as, as credences, because, because in many cases oh, there are variations of credence which, which don't correspond to level, variations of trust, because there's no trust at all. But, but uh, there, can be, there can be variations of credence uh, uh, and variations of trust, and, and so you know, variations in, in the extent to which you're willing to act on something. But there are, you know, there are many propositions that you know, you're virtually not willing to act on at all. But, um, but it, yeah, but so we, 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 it, we can't be a matter of, as it were, that, that you only believe it if you, you will act on it no matter what is at stake, because virtually nothing satisfies that, that condition. But, you know, I think, I mean, there, there may be a quite a bit, I mean, roughly speaking, there may be a whole lot of stuff such that the our default is to trust it. And, and so we'll trust it un, unless there's, uh, as it were, some alarm bell is ringing in our head, <laughs> um, in which case, uh, as it were, some kind of, if you like, some emergency uh, routine takes, <laughs> takes over and, and trumps the, uh, the, the, the normal kind of trust that we would expend, extend to this thing or person or, or whatever. Right. By the way, if, if we're going to have a break, I think, I think probably we should have the, have the break now, uh, but, but a relatively short, short one, because uh, I guess some people want to, to leave at, at five for, for uh, Margaret Gilbert's lectures. So. Okay, so I, I think I'll say, I, I, I'll say the, maybe the, a, a number of other things in defense of the idea of outright or uh, full uh, belief and ag against the sort of weak uh, interpretation that uh, is being defended in, in the paper uh, that I've been discussing. Um, I mean, w one, one observation that is, is worth making is that that b believe and think are, are not fully interchangeable in, in English. Um, and a, a, um, a, a specific, a certainly odd um, feature of belief, it, it, the, I mean, the term belief, is that it, it has sort of vaguely religious connotations in a lot of contexts. Um, so I remember a publisher once telling me that um, that Peter Forrest's book, The Dynamics of uh, Belief, it, uh, it didn't sell very well. And their hypothesis of why it hadn't sold very well was that because it had the word belief in the title, booksellers were putting it in the religious studies uh, section of, the, of bookshops. And it, although it was a sort of technical discussion of belief updating and, and so on, um, and, uh, and so it hadn't found its natural uh, readers. Um, and um, so the, there are certainly an, a number of, um, of cases w where um, it's the term b believe it, it would be natural, but uh, but it would be a bit odd to uh, to say to use think. So I, you know, I, if we imagine some kind of preacher talking, and you know, the preacher might say, you know, you. You've got to believe that Jesus can save you, or something like that, and um, and that would not be very different from saying you've got to be sure that Jesus can save you, and it, and um, it would be it would and definitely it would be very strange to, to paraphrase that as um, you've got to believe it likely that Jesus can save you. Um, that, that, that the, the putting in the likely there d d completely alters the the force of uh, what's being said. So I mean that's that's one indication that that believe is uh, can be used in this stronger uh, way. Um, just a, a comment on the the use of the the term believe in um, in analytic uh, philosophy and in particular in epistemology. Uh, of course, the the contrast between, uh, in some sense, between knowledge and belief, you know, it, it goes back uh, a very long way in the history of uh, philosophy. But it's it's striking that um, 
if you look at Gettier's 1963 paper where he's criticizing what is, we would now call the justified uh, true belief uh, theory uh, of, um, of knowledge, um, the, two, the two main people that he's criticizing uh, are, well, I mean, apart from Plato, uh, uh, um, are Ayer and Chisholm, and neither of them uses the term believe in their analysis. Where Ayer uses is sure, and uh, Chisholm uses uh, accepts. But I think ever since Gettier, believe has become the, uh, has been the, the standard uh, term for talking about this. And um, it, of course, if if belief w were as weak as, um, as being suggested in this paper, it, it, doesn't, it would seem too weak to, to be appropriate in an analysis of knowledge. If you just believe that something is likely, then that's not enough for, you know, for, for, uh, for knowledge. Um, um, and it would be sort of odd if, you know, in, well, I mean, it's now 55 years since uh, Gettier's uh, paper in you know in more than half a century of analytic philosophy that uh, it it hadn't uh, occurred to all the hundreds of uh, English uh, native English speakers involved in this uh, debate. Um, I mean, many of them trained as ordinary language philosophers and so on. That uh, that they were all misusing the, <laughs> the term belief and I mean you know all, all sorts of objections have been made to various kinds of. Uh, analysis of knowledge, but that, but there hasn't been any focus on on that, and so it would be strange if that uh, involved everybody making a, a, a wrong assumption about about what was meant by uh, b belief. Um, but I, I don't want to put too much weight on that uh, consideration. I think something that just as you know, a, a matter of whether this is a notion. Uh, that is present in, uh, in ordinary uh, na natural language or not. It's, it's worth thinking about the, um, the construction fully believes, which is, I mean, you can check on, on Google. It's, it's, a, it's a very uh, common uh, construction. Um, and um, and where you can get the, the right kind of contrast. I mean, you can get, for example, he thinks Spurs will win, but it's not that he fully believes they will win. That, I mean, that's uh, understandable. That, that's like, you know, something is uh, large but not enormous, or, or that's just a, a familiar kind of contrast between, between two levels. And you, you certainly don't get neg raising with, um, with fully believe. It's, I mean, if we say Mary does not fully believe that it will rain, we, that, uh, we don't, from that, get that Mary fully believes that it w that it will not rain, um, and and you can easily have a contrast between he sort of believes Spurs will win, but he doesn't fully believe they will win. And um, and one thing that's worth uh, emphasizing is I I don't think that, when sh that this is just some kind of um, special idiom uh, involving f uh, fully b believe. So that, I mean there are a lot of other uh, fully constructions like. Uh, fully participate, fully enjoy, fully understand, fully accept, fully comply, and then you can fully execute a contract. And so, um, I, I I think it's um, we, you know we've got something much more systematic going on here. And I think in in all, in all of those uses, the fully seems to be. Um, contributing uh, pretty much the same sort of thing. It's, as it were, it's, uh, although the, there isn't a terribly clear scale, it's, it, it, as it were, there is, there is some kind of vague scale there and, and fully is pushing you up to the, uh, towards the top of it. Um, well, this is one way in which there's a bit of a contrast between believe and think, um, in that the, the, the expression fully think is, is not very idiomatic in English. Be, in, I mean, it'd be interesting to consider what the, the data are for Italian in this respect. But um, when, I, when I checked the phrase fully think on Google, I mean, it got very few hits. And the, 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 the two people who came up top uh, using the phrase fully think were, uh, were Donald Trump 
and, and the philosopher Fred Feldman. <laughs> so it might, be, it might be the first time they've ever found each other, I mean, found themselves in each other's company, but um, whereas, but I, not, not that, it, that this tells you very much, but, but totally believe and totally think that they both seem to be uh, very common these days, although I think those are probably both quite recent uh, usages. Um, so, I've, there are some further things there that, 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 I, that some further considerations that I mention are there that, uh, but which I think I'll p pass over in, in the interests of time. But it seems to me that there's a, a reasonable amount of linguistic evidence that, uh, although we may be able to uh, to use uh, terms like believe and think for for quite. Um, low degrees of commitment in these special uh, cases, whatever exactly is going on there with the who, who do you believe will win the World Cup kind of context, that, that there are also, it's perfectly possible to use them in this sense of uh, fully believing, or certainly it's possible to use believe in that way. That way. Um, and, um, and that... that, that Corresponds to um, the intended. Sorry, I think that's it. Is that it? Yeah. Thanks. Um, the intended uh, use of believe in in philosophy. Um, one suggestion that that that, that Sandra has been in, in effect commenting on, but which I haven't said much about. Uh, today is that if we have a, a kind of um, a, an explication of belief in terms of knowledge, r roughly along the lines that that um, believing something is treating it as thing as things that are known are treated, um, then then that itself would, in suitable contexts. Uh, be be setting the the standard uh, for uh, what was required, what level of commitment was required, because it would be the roughly the, the, the level of commitment that, w that was required for knowledge, and and, and one corollary uh, of that might be that there's a, a potential circularity in standard analyses uh, of. Um, of knowledge in terms of belief plus truth and extra conditions, which is that um, because the, it, the very use of belief that's involved um, may be one where the, the standard for the required level of belief is it set, itself set by knowledge, so that uh, in that respect, um, it, it's not an analysis of knowledge in uh, independently understood terms, because even the, the term belief might have to be understood in terms of knowledge to get what the appropriate uh, level of uh, belief is. So, I mean, th that's, th that's going a, a further step. But, but uh, I mean, that, that might be w one way in which philosophers have, in fact, find it relatively easy to understand uh, belief in the... Uh, uh, in a way that's, that, looks, that looks superficially appropriate for analyses of knowledge, precisely because they are implicitly uh, understanding uh, be the, the belief in terms of uh, knowledge. Um, so I, I just, b before we go over to, to, to discussion, I just want to say some things, to, tying this up again to questions about, the, uh, about norms for belief, and in particular the question of the knowledge norm uh, for for belief, uh, so I mean the knowledge the knowledge norm for belief does depend on belief being um, a, an appropriately reasonably strong kind of uh, state um, because it, because if belief just meant a you know a, a level of uh, commitment that you know perhaps even one that didn't, even, didn't require even 50% credence, then, then knowledge would be a completely inappropriate uh, norm for it. Um, and this is something which, which has to be borne in mind in 
uh, in, in assessments of uh, the knowledge norm for belief. And um, I mean, you can see these things going wrong in, in a, a recent uh, critique of the knowledge norm of belief by, by Daniel Whiting, uh, which it, it, it's quite odd because he, at the beginning, he says that he's concerned only with outright belief, not with degrees of belief or confidence. He's very explicit about that. Um, and then w when he comes to criticize the, the knowledge norm, he says, the knowledge view appears to conflict with the ways in which we criticize and evaluate beliefs. Uh, suppose David asks, who do you believe will win the next election? Kelly might reply, the Republicans. It would be very odd for David to reply, you don't know that. And it would be entirely appropriate for Kelly to reject this challenge by saying, I never said that I did. I was only telling you what I believe. And, um, and Whiting adds, note that David might be right that Kelly does not know but this, but still his remark seems out of order. Um, so I, I think that the, I mean, the kinds of comments that Whiting makes about this conversation are, are, are okay. But, but the conversation is itself one where, where the context is set by this question, who do you believe will win the next election? Which is exactly the kind of context it, it, that we've, we've seen um, drives down the operative uh, standard for belief to uh, maybe just to uh, at least 50% or more credence or something like that. Uh, I mean, whatever exactly is going on in these cases, because they do seem very, very uh, special cases, uh, but, um, but just, just taking it um, to be the case for the, the time being that, that, that we can appropriately talk about uh, belief uh, with these relatively low levels of, uh, of credence. It's quite clear that, uh, that in these contexts, belief is not being judged by the standard of outright belief. When, when the, the, the questions like, who do you, uh, or fully, full belief, that, um, that when we ask who do you believe will win the election, we're not asking who do you fully believe will win the next election. And therefore, uh, the kind of conversational uh, phenomena that Whiting is, is citing are simply irrelevant to the, the norm that he's criticizing um, because um, believe is not being uh, used in the sense of outright uh, belief. And, um, and I think, well, just since we've been talking about weak terms in relation to neg raising, it, you know, it's worth noticing that, that you get um, very similar phenomena with other so-called weak terms like want and, uh, and like, um, so that In a suitable context, you know, we, we can, you know, uh, somebody who's facing a, a, a conviction, I mean, his, you know, the, 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 the lawyer might ask him, look, do, look, do, you, want to, do you want to pay, uh, you know, a, a 10,000 euro fine or go to prison for six months or, you know, whatever the, 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 the options are. And of course, there's a sense in which the person doesn't want to do any of these things, but, but in, the, uh, in, in the context, um, the, the standard for wanting can be driven down by the, by the, the, the same kind of um, comparative question. Uh, which, which of these do you want? Or uh, with, with like, you can, you can ask um, somebody um, which, which of several uh, options would they like to take? And... Um, I, you know, and, you, and so you can get a case in which uh, they tell you which one they'd like to take, even though, uh, in fact, they would dislike all of these options. And uh, so this isn't just an isolated phenomenon with believe and think. It's something that it seems that you can, you can get uh, with these, uh, these weak uh, terms. Um, yes? Uh, a clarification question. I am not sure 
I understood uh, the comparison between uh, the whiting example yes. and the case for like. Yes. Um, can you j go over it again? So, uh, in the whiting example, uh, someone asks, uh, who do you believe will win the next election? And the other says, the Republican. And then the other person says, well, you don't know it. And then what about uh, the like? What would be an analogy with like? Uh, um, how would you, uh, because I, I think I missed just something. I'm not sure I understood the point about like uh, and want. Yes, so I, I'm, the part of the example that I was focusing on was just the part which involves uh, the reporting of beliefs w without bringing in the, um, any question of, of the, the knowledge norm itself. So that th this was a case in which, um, I mean, I guess it's, it, it's an, um, an American presidential election, so maybe, maybe there are only two candidates, so we can, let's pretend that we can, you know. And so um, it, this is a case where uh, if you ask who do you believe will win, then you, then you go, assuming that, that there's one of them that you think is slight, at least slightly more likely than the other. That, that, so you name the one that you think is more likely, but it might be that, that it, it's just a matter of a credence of 51% versus credence of 49%. And, um, but then if you, but if you then ask them the, um, a question like, well, do you fully, I mean, so you say one of, um, whichever candidate, it, um, so it's just by party. So it's, um, supposing you think the Republicans have a 51% chance, and then you're asked, but, but do you fully believe that? Th then you're going to say no. I mean, I'm, you know, it's, it's just, I think it's like more likely than not. And, um, and then the idea was, um, you know, supp suppose that, well, uh, the example I give in, um, in the paper is that w where you have a bunch of uh, aristocrats during the French Revolution. I mean, they're, they're, let's pretend they're queuing up to be guillotined. And, and, and then, you know, and, and one of them might say to the other, would you, would you like to go first or second? <laughs> um, and, you know, it's, it's so it's, you know, and, but if, you know, if we then step back and say, look, it, it is, um, is being guillotined the way that you would like to spend the next uh, two minutes? Um, yeah. I missed the analogy because I was thinking as to the liking example, something like, would you like uh, ice cream or um, the apple pie? Yes. So that's a different case because then, uh, uh, and then I say, I would like ice cream. Yes. That means that I really like ice cream. I don't want the apple pie, I want the ice cream. Yes. So that would be a different case. Yes. So yeah. that was, uh, so I, was, uh, I wasn't sure I was understanding the analogy because I was thinking about this other example, which does not suit with the one you were yeah. presenting. So uh, I was misled yeah. by my own example, I, yes. which is not yours. Yeah, yeah. so the, thing, the, the, the key thing is, in some cases, we're just going by comparative rankings. And, and it's just to do with what's at the top of these comparative rankings, irrespective of uh, how, of what your more as were absolute attitudes are, uh, and so yes. But if 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 it was, um, you know, su suppose suppose that 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 you were choosing items on the menu from the the, the prison at the prison cafe, and and all of the, all of these items are really disgusting. That <laughs> that you might still say which would you which would you like. <laughs> and, and, Are there other questions? Yes. yes. Uh, I start with Sabine and then Sandro. Ah, sorry, Sandro. Do you want to be guillotined first? No, no, no. <laughs> are we already in the first No. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. 
So, uh, I beg your pardon, perhaps uh, I missed some points because I was not present neither yesterday nor the first part of today's lecture. But I have a basic question. I mean, um, I have the impression that the English word belief, as every word of a natural language, covers a great uh, uh, number of uh, subtleties and different cases and in a way we are working uh, because of the differences included in the semantic range of the word that is of the concept mm. we already thought of the possible relationships between uh, belief and assent, uh, belief and trust, uh, and today we spoke uh, further on these uh, uh, family resemblances in a way. So my question is, at least I tried to find uh, this solution working on the history of philosophy, but sometimes I think it could be just a help, not a very a radical solution, even uh, from the point of view of theoretical philosophy. That is to say, if we put uh, as the major focus of our inquiry a kind of an unknown variable, a kind of an X, which uh, uh, we know that in different uh, uh, natural languages sounds in different way, and this uh, um, way of uh, um, identifying what we are thinking of uh, is full in a way of suggestions because uh, each word in natural languages has its own uh, weight from the point of view of the means of expression. I mean, it can, can have an inner form or language in the Humboldtian way, an etymology, some uh, derivations or, or roots uh, which can suggest something we uh, wanted to be clear of. So uh, in this case, wouldn't it be easier to understand that what we are trying to describe and to evaluate and uh, uh, mm, what we would like to assign a kind of a framework to um, is not completely identifiable with the meaning of a certain word, but uh, it is uh, the concept which many different words try to suggest as their meaning. Would, uh, wouldn't this uh, approach help us in finding all the nuances, all the differences, which can be, in a way, developed without uh, um, avoiding um, us to recognize them as correlated, as uh, interconnected, and then from the point of view of conceptual analysis, uh, having a strong relationship one with the other? Thanks. Yeah. So. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll give an answer as I understand the question, and, and then if, if you feel I haven't properly addressed what, what you had in, in mind, then, then you come back. But um, So, w one thing I want to emphasize is that it's not that fundamentally we want to give um, any special priority to the English word believe or the English word uh, think. Um, and um, so it, it's, it, and it's certainly not the case that there's any presumption here that, that English is any, as were, uh, the English vocabulary is any better than that of any, any other language. But, um, but that, you see, I think what, I mean, for, you know, for many purposes, if we were, if we were just simply given the notion of, uh, you know, some the notion that we want of outright belief or of full belief that, um, it, it, it doesn't fundamentally matter too much whether it, it corresponds to the way that some word in uh, in a, any natural language is used, but the thing is. 
in reflecting on this phenomenon before we fully understood it, as well, we have to engage in it. it um, I mean, you know, in a way that is, to some extent, mediated by some language or, or other. And, um, and, and what uh, the authors of this paper, Hawthorne, Rothschild and Spectre, um, are proposing is that, that philosophers have, have in effect, um, invented a sort of mythical status of full or outright belief that, that just doesn't, doesn't correspond to, to anything that is expressed in natural language and, and that there's no, spe and th there's no special reason to believe it. I mean, I think the, the, you know, there's some presumption that al although the natural language may not be the, the best way of describing uh, mental phenomena, it's, it, it is the natural starting point and, uh, and that it's a reasonable assumption that the kind of distinctions that are made in natural language are at least fairly good ones for, for, for uh, thinking about the mind w with because they've had to, I mean, they have, uh, as it were, withstood quite a lot of evolutionary pressure and so on. And, uh, but, but if, if the, 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 the notion that, the type of notion that philosophers are sort of relying on in epistemology just doesn't, you know, doesn't in fact have any of that kind of backing from natural language, then, then we need to, to rethink what we're, we're doing in this whole, as it were, dialectic of, of knowledge and, uh, and belief. And, uh, and so um, what I've been um, suggesting is, is that, in fact, there is, there is sufficient evidence in natural language that there is some notion of, of full belief. Um, and, the, and so this is not simply a, a philosopher's myth, but it's something with, um, which it does have roots in natural language, although um, I, I think they've made it clear that, that uh, as we're separating the thing that we're interested in from uh, closely related things is, is a lot harder than you might expect, that, that, that it's a much more complex uh, phenomenon that, than one could uh, be easy to suppose. Thanks. So now, I, I agree, I think, I agree with you that something like your strong or outright belief exists, but I, I'm not sure it is the things we ascribe each other most of the time. So I'm not, I'm not sure, I see a clash, and you, I, I'd like to know if uh, I misunderstood something or there is a clash between what you call a strong belief, outright belief, and the way I, think, I used to think about belief. And because there, there is a feature which I take to be central to belief, which is uh, sensitivity to evidence or openness to, to revision, right? So we know that beliefs do not, uh, do not perfectly respond to evidence, but the more a state doesn't respond to evidence, uh, uh, the more we doubt its do doxastic status, right? I would, no, I, I don't, I don't, don't think okay. that's true. I mean, I think that, um, we have the notion of um, a dogmatic belief, which is um, the kind of belief uh, which we think of as an extremely firm belief that the person is unwilling to give up for um, for any reason, you know, no matter how good the evidence. And, and, the, and uh, the idea of a dogmatic belief, it doesn't seem like a contradiction in terms or anything I, like I that. I think so. Be, will it, deciding to believe is something that we cannot do, right? Well, I, I that's, just, that's what makes something a belief, is to be open to abandon it for some reason. If, if I have this in front of me and I say, okay, yeah, I, I, I see it, but I decide to believe I see uh, a bottle, you tell me now you're imagining a bottle, you're not believing there is. So I think, I don't know, I see something, a dogmatic, an extremely dogmatic, that's why I don't take religious beliefs to be, you say somehow, you take religious beliefs to be somehow paradigmatic. Well, I, I, but I mean, they're, they're, I think they're fully examples of belief. Uh, I mean, I don't think, I mean, I think, that, I don't think that they're the only paradigms that we have, but, um, 
I think that the, the natural view is that the more dogmatic a b b belief is, the, 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 the firmer it is. And, and that, the, the, so the, these strike us as quite central cases of uh, belief. And you know, I, don't, I don't think that the fact that, that we can't just decide to believe uh, is, is really in, in tension with, with that. Um, because I mean, it's one. I mean, th these, as well, these, these might be these firm commitments. So, you know, as were, are ones that you can't just. To, I mean, it may be psychologically impossible to, you know, with these firmest type kinds of commitment, to to take them. You know, just in a capricious kind of uh, way, but. Um, so I, you know, I, 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 I don't see that that there's any, as I say, there's any tension between. Let, let's say the. I, I, I don't think it's absolutely impossible, but I think it's a, the, the just, just believing because you decide to believe something. I think is, is at most a very marginal phenomenon. Um, but I, I think that's fully com consistent with the idea that 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 you can believe something, um, you know, in a way which. Uh, is insensitive to evidence, and you know, and I don't think religious beliefs are you know the only example of that. Well, I mean, I th you know, political beliefs are um, are an example of that. But it, you know, if 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 I mean, it could also be a, a belief in one's own existence. Well, you have evidence for that. Don't but I mean, there's 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 no there's there's no ev there's no evidence. That would convince me that I don't exist. Um, well, I don't but, know. That's, a, that's a weird case. Though, yeah, but I mean, it's not. But the point is, uh, that the, 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 the fact that there's no evidence that that, that would convince me uh, otherwise doesn't doesn't mean that it's not a belief. Okay, let, let, let's put it in this way. Can I? Yes. So I agree with you that we are very happy to call them beliefs. To you, we, but my point, may, maybe that's because we have. You, you yesterday you said that you are maybe. I'm interested in what is in our mind for like the psychological reality. So what I'm trying to say is that it seems to me that we use belief to call to, to indicate two very different things. So religious beliefs behave very differently from many, most of our perceptual beliefs or other sorts of everyday beliefs get revised immediately. We, did, we don't even notice how quickly they get revised in the, in the light of the contrary evidence. So we, we, change, we update them all the time very quickly without even realizing. While religious beliefs are the opposite. Uh, so, so we use the term beliefs, but the, functionally speaking, they are very different sort of states. And also, I think, our, the way in which, even linguistic, so it's true that we use the term belief, but the way in which we use belief in the two contexts is very different. So if I say, generally, um, believe in many cases at least in some cases, it's used to weaken your assertions. So when, if I say, compare, compare, the two, the, uh, compare like, it's, uh, it's 6 p.m. versus, I believe it's 6 p.m. So the second sense that you are weakening your assertion. Yeah. Where if you have, um, God is listening to me, I believe that God is listening to me. It seems to me that in religious, in religious case, you generally use it to, to strengthen, not to, when you say, I believe in God, you, you don't want to s express, as you said before, uh, an uncertainty. I don't and in, in religious context, we also use believe much more. In, in ordinary context, we omit believe all the time. While in religious context, you, you often make explicit the belief. It seems to me that the atti so in, in the, in, during the mass, you say the credo, you say, you, you, credo, uh, I don't know in English, but uh, I don't know. We, it seems that, okay, we, we use belief, but even, even in the linguistic uses reflect a difference in the underlying attitude. So, there are, I don't know, uh, sorry. Yeah, well, I'm not convinced that, that these cases are working so differently. I mean, let's, let's just take, take the case uh, where, where you put, I believe, at the, at the end, just because it's, it, it, the, 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 there isn't the same ambiguity between the, the uh, sense uh, modifier and, and the, the, the force modifier. So if you say it's 6 p.m., I believe, the, 
the I believe is is a kind of warning um, to the, the the hearer that you might be mistaken about this. And you know, God is listening to me. I believe is is exactly the same. Um, it, you know, if if you're if you're the absolutely totally you know, convinced Christian fundamentalist, let's say, we're, we're, there's, just, there's just no question about it. God is listening to me. There's, um, there's no point in putting um, I believe there. Um, I mean, if, if, we, if we think about putting um, I believe uh, at the front, and let's, let's take the case where, we, I mean, we can also consider the case where, it's, where, where you, we're using it really to contribute to the sense. So it's meant to be contributing to truth conditions. Um, then the, the typical intonation where, where, where you're doing, where, where the I believe is, you know, is actually contributing to truth conditions is where you emphasize the I, you know, because you're contrasting yourself with people who don't believe, um, and then, um, so in that case, in neither case are you are you detracting from the the, the commitment. You know, I, I mean, if, if um, you know, if you say I believe that God is listening to me, you're you're emphasizing that you are a religious person, but you know maybe the other people in the conversation are not religious or something like that. But uh, um, so it's not a question of the, the level of your commitment; it's a question of what kind of person you are versus what kind of person that they are, or something like that. And um, with I believe that it's 6 p.m. I mean, of course, it's it's a bit harder to think of a, a context for that. But this could, you know, this could be. Um, you know, some some argument about whether the, the um, which time zone we're in or whatever, and um, and you know, we, well, it could be, for example, that, that some people have been arguing about whether it's 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. and then they appeal to to you and you say, well, I believe that it's 6 p.m. and um, and again, it would be um, just e emphasizing. That, that this, not so much emphasizing the possibility of error as emphasizing that this is a property that you have that other people might not, uh, might not have. Um, so I, I, I don't see it, that in practice that they're actually being used differently. Um, I, th I think they're actually making this, the same kind of contribution, whether the content is, is r religious or utterly mundane. I leave it. Um, that, this may be naive, but uh, I was wondering, uh, speaking about uh, speaking of uh, dogmatic beliefs uh, uh, as beliefs that are uh, not uh, evidence sensitive, uh, uh, do you? I was wondering whether you, you, do you draw a line uh, between beliefs and delusions and where do you draw a line, if you draw it at all? Well, so the, yes, I mean, the, so, so the, for example, if, you know, if we take the, um, the Mullah Laya illusion, where, where um, so the Mullah Laya, the Mullah Laya illusion is where these, the, the, the horizontal lines are the same. I, I didn't mean illusion, I meant delusion. Delusion, okay. Um, so, de, so delusions, um, so, of, of course, um, well, obviously there's a difference between belief and delusion in the sense that not all beliefs are delusions. Um, but um, I think that delusions are, I mean, the paradigm delusions are beliefs. I mean, so supposing that somebody is under the delusion that he's Napoleon. If, if it's a full delusion, then, then, he, um, then he, he believes that he is Napoleon. Of course, I, you know, I think in, in practice, um, we, we may be dealing with cases where there's a kind, you know, it's something, a, a, 
the form of the delusion is more like a temptation to think of oneself as Napoleon or something like that, which, um, and, uh, which may not involve full belief that one's Napoleon. But, but then it, that strikes me as uh, also not the, the fullest kind of delusion. So that, um, I, you know, I think when we're, as with the paradigm delusion is, it, it's not just a, a false belief, but something like, you know, a, a belief which is pathologically at odds with somebody's evidence. Uh, but, I, but that strikes me as, uh, as still a, a belief. And, um, you know, and, and I think the, the, the issue, w if we're considering whether somebody believes that they're Napoleon, the question is, well, do they act on the belief that they're Napoleon? As, of course, Napoleon in somewhat reduced circumstances. And, um, but, you know, that, that they, but it, assuming that, that, that they do, the, as it were, that they do take very, you know, they, that they try to order armies into battle or, try, you know, or try to order people about or whatever it is. So that they, they may well be acting on the belief that they're Napoleon. Of, you know, of course, you know, if you believe something and, and nobody else believes it, then it, you know, that, does, that does reduce the, uh, your scope for acting on the belief. But, I mean, that would be true with all sorts of, even just very ordinary facts. So, um, I'm, I'm confused by your um, uh, reply to Whiting, to Whiting's yes. objection, because somehow it seems that you're applying by saying, well, the context that, that Whiting brings up is <clears throat> a typical context in which belief is not full belief. Yes. Um, but, I mean, what confuses me is this. Even if belief meant fully believe, it wouldn't mean no. So... Yeah. To the question, you don't know that, he could always reply, I never said I did, because he didn't say I, I know. Yeah. Or are you assuming that um, to treat something as something I know means as identical to? No, so I think, I think what's meant to be going on in this passage, which is, uh, you know, it, it, it is basically a quotation from Whiting. Um, so, the idea is that um, the i mean he's i think he's that when david says you don't you don't know that he's he's challenging uh he seems to be challenging the, um kelly's right to um to assert, but also uh, implicitly his, his right to believe it. And, um, and so, so it seems he's saying that, that you don't know that isn't, um, it's not an appropriate criticism of the answer. Um, and, um, and then the idea is that the reason, the reason it's not an appropriate criticism of the answer is because um, the, the, the all that uh, Kelly was supposed to do is to say something that they believed, um, and um, it, but if there were a knowledge norm for belief, um, then uh, this would their belief would be a bad belief if it if it didn't satisfy the knowledge yeah norm. But, I mean the, the knowledge norm for belief does not require that um, if I say I believe then I know no but, but it, it well it, it the knowledge norm for belief says that it ought to be that if you if you believe then you know um, so I think the idea so what's um, so, for, for example, okay, so, uh, <clears throat> the, the, the answer, if, if, let me put it, if it were a religious belief, and he said, I believe that God will save us, right? Um, and he replied, you don't know that, yes. then that would be appropriate. 
uh, as a as a um, as a reply. Well, so uh, so suppose yes, yeah, suppose suppose that it's um, in a a context um, in which somebody has been asked to uh, to say um, what what they fully believe or something like that and and then they answer that uh, god will god will save us um, and um, then if somebody ob objects but you don't know that i mean of course it, it really it's not so much an objection to the to their answer to the question as an objection to the state which makes that the the, the relevant answer to the question i mean but um, because it's a if we insofar as we're talking about the um, I mean, he's talking about the knowledge norm for belief, not the knowledge norm for assertion. <laughs> so, um, but so it, 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 um, but he's been asked, and then and then the objector would be we say, saying there's something wrong with your belief because you're you're believing um, that uh, that God will save you, but you don't know that you're, that God will save you, and. Um, so, uh, so it should be appropriate according to yes. you. Yes. So, so in a context like that, it should be okay if I say, I believe that I'm very religious, so I believe that God, Jesus, will save us all. <clears throat> and then, uh, and then it would be appropriate in that case to say to reply, you don't know that. Yes. Because I, in that case, I would say yes, I know. Yes. Of course. Uh, yes. Okay. So, so I mean, but. but um, so that, I mean, I think in a way it's, it, it's I mean, as I say, this is, this is Whiting's ob objection, but, but it's, it, it, in a way it's a slight change of subject because the, the, in a way originally the subject is what does somebody believe? And then, of course, by challenging them and saying you don't know that, that we're changing the subject from what do they believe to do they, uh, you know, are, are they in a position to have these beliefs? Um, I, I, but, you know, I, I, I mean, my view is th that, um, given that they don't, given that they don't know that God will save them, there's something wrong with their belief that God will save them. But of course, the, 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 you know, I, that you know, I th I think that, that they don't know it. And but I mean, that is a you know a a, a claim that I would make that, that that they will very likely contest. So um, so that the. But but what they but of course but there but what in that case they're contesting is whether they satisfy the knowledge norm or not for this belief, whereas in Whiting's case the 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 idea is that the protest is that the knowledge norm is simply um, an inappropriate for for these beliefs because because it, it's it's just irrelevant to judge them by whether they're, they're cases of of knowledge or not because. Oh, in effect, all the person, well, I mean, what it comes down to is all the person has to say is whatever they think is more likely, the, uh, the more likely outcome. So, so in the case of full belief, like religious belief, then it becomes appropriate to, to reply that, even though the question is the appropriateness, not the, 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 the fact that one cannot object to religious belief, of course, right? Yes. I mean, <laughs> and it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't see, it, it would seem appropriate, I mean, to, to say that, and in fact, the, the speaker could take it as appropriate and answer that he, he does know in that sense. I mean, yes, okay, yeah. so th yeah. that's so, th 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 in a sense, you are committed to saying that there are cases in which questions like who do you believe will do X, right, uh, and in which it is appropriate to say you don't know that, then yes, right? oh, oh, I think it's. It's kind of appropriate in the sense that it's an appropriate criticism of the belief. Although I think also, but th th there's another thing going on which I wasn't actually calling Whitey out on, but, but I think is a bit odd in that example, which is that th there is a switch of conversational focus as well from the question, what do you believe, to the question, are you entitled to have these beliefs? Mm. Um, and, and I think, th th it's so that it, in a sense, there's a sl with the question, but you don't know that. Um, there's also a feeling 
of the, the, the p person who says you don't know as, as kind of as we're moving the goalposts of the conversation. Mm. Um, and mm. and that's, that's a further th a thing that's, uh, that's a, a little bit off about, about their, the, the, their objection, but it, which would, it would be worth, yeah, I, I probably ought to add that in, in the paper that. Um, Can I ask another one? Yes, the last one. <laughs> no. one. Okay, no. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> usually when there is a, um, some sort of contextual parameters that to be fixed, um, this shows up with, in the behavior of negation. So say, if I say John didn't eat, uh, the way I understand it is John didn't eat anything. Yes. But if I say John didn't notice, then there's an argument that is contextually determined there. It means John didn't notice that thing. Mm. And in fact, I can say, I can reply by saying she didn't notice what, Yes. right? And same, to some extent, the same thing happens with tall, right? I mean, if, if, if you say to me, John is not tall and I, and I knew that John is uh, one meter 80 uh, tall, um, then, you know, I could say it's not all with respect to what, and he said yes. to me, "Well, okay, with, with, with respect to the basketball player." Yes. And um, but you know, if I say uh, John doesn't believe that it will rain, somehow it's not clear to me that I can ask a question like in respect to what, or or, yes. or sort of question the the. Um, the contextual parameter in a way that I, that I can question it in in uh, in the other cases. Do you have any? Yes. Um, so yeah, it's, no, I think that's an, that's that's interesting. Um, I mean, I think there's a kind of there's a sort of generic response that one can give to those kind of uh, questions, um, which is, you know, by what standard or something like that. But, 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 but these are particularly cases where, as it were, it just seems like a, you know, a straightforwardly okay thing to say, and then somebody challenges it, and, and then you say, so by, by what standard doesn't he, he believe? But, where you're, but that, which do, doesn't seem to be picking up, you know, a, a, any very specific, <laughs> Uh, dimension, or uh, but because it, you know, it, it's kind of asking, you know, on what grounds are you objecting, uh, something like that. Um, so, so one one thing that op opens up is, um, you know, w w whether. Whether the, the the kind of context in which we're asking, um, you know, who, who who's going to win or or whatever, are, are so special that that, that 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 they're not just within the normal range of variation. Um, I mean, it's but I think it, it. I mean, there seems to be a bit more going on because it because. Uh, I mean, you know, if you think about the cases where the, we contrast, you know, saying he believes but he isn't sure, and or he's not certain, and so on, and so they, they, um, of course, so if you say that if you say he doesn't he doesn't believe it, then there's the ne neg raising phenomenon, and but you could but you, it could be um, that. That you'd say something like, you know, I. I, I wouldn't say that he believes it, or something like that, which is where you, which isn't subject to to neg raising, and um, and then somebody might they might say um, do you mean he's not sure or something? Um, I mean, I, I think of course what, what we the 
what we want are cases where it's it, it's sufficiently clear w w which things are are just you know in the common ground and which which things are subject to doubt in this case. But I mean, I guess what, I guess maybe a, a better case would be where the uh, where the speaker says something like, "I wouldn't call that believing." <laughs> You know where it's kind of where it seems to be in the common ground that you know we have a, a, as a, a fair idea of what of what his attitude is. It's just the question is just whether to call it whether this counts as a case of believing and um, and uh, um, so. But I mean, you know, I think there are cases. Just thinking of other examples where, um, let's let's say that, um, so supposing that somebody is shown the, you know, the the Empire State Building and and, and says, well, I, I wouldn't call that tall, <laughs> um, and then. We, you know, we might ask, but. By what standard, <laughs> or something like? <laughs> what standard are you using? I, you know, um, so that um, it, it's you know, it seems that that, that quite when these things are questioned, uh, I mean, of course, the, the, I mean, it seems that maybe quite that quite often we have to resort to these somewhat generic ways of of asking for uh, more of a specification. And so, so maybe belief is, is, in that sense isn't isn't so un, unusual. Um. Uh, definitely in skyscrapers, um, you know, it seems that you know the standard is given as implicit. I mean, in a sense, so it doesn't make much sense to question the. Yeah, uh, I mean, by which standard it seems kind of odd. Kind of odd. I mean, but, but I mean, I think even you know, e e even if one took a somewhat less e extreme case, you know, wh wh where. Um, So, some, so let's say that somebody you know sees a tower in San Gimignano and says, "I wouldn't call that tall." <laughs> um, then, I mean, it's it's clear it's clear that th which scale we're talking about. Um, but but I think what but in those cases, I think what, what see what we seem to be asking for is not. You know, we're not expecting a speaker to provide, you know, it, oh, it's got to be at least 200 meters or something like that. It, it seems that what we really want them to do is to, to kind of fill in what they think is the appropriate conversational context for their remark to be understood in, and, and which, you know, typically would be, you know, would involve specifying a comparison class or something like that. And, and we do, and so, so that. Um, that e even where the scale is clear, w what we might want is is not the point on the scale, but the comparison class that determines the point on the on the scale, and uh, um, and that's. But of course, we can't expect speakers to be terribly articulate uh, about what it is that they're asking for, and and so it you know it might be that um, that with these belief cases as well, the w w really what we want people to say in these cases is. Uh, well, what what kind of context are we you know are, are we talking about? You know, are, you know, are you asking for mathematical certainty, or what, or what is what what do you want? <laughs> um. Perhaps should the Spanish Inquisition appears <laughs> and then they question the belief. Yes, oh, that, that might be an example yes. in which they are asking. It is appropriate for them to ask. <laughs> Which is your standard? Of yes. <laughs> okay. We finish here today. Uh, tomorrow is the last uh, lecture, so see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, and, and tomorrow it will be on on model building in uh, in epistemology, and so that it'll be uh, it'll be a slight uh, uh, shift of gears, and, and I'll be be talking about. The, 
the role of, of somewhat more formal methodologies in, in epistemology and, and what, what they might contribute uh, to, to mainstream epistemology, something like that. Thank you.